Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to explain continuity and differentiability alongside some examples. So first off, let's talk about continuity at a point. In order to figure out whether a function f of x is continuous at a single point x equals a, we need to satisfy three requirements. First, we need f of a to be defined. In other words, if we plug in a as our x value, we get out some y value. Second, we need the limit as x approaches a of f of x to exist. This means that the limit as you approach from the left is equal to the limit as you approach from the right. And third, we need this limit to equal the value we got when we plugged in a to the function, f of a. So for this graph, the function is continuous at x equals a because when we plug in a, we get some value, the limit as x approaches a from the left is the same value as when x approaches a from the right. And finally, this value of the limit is the same value as the one we got when we plugged in a to the function. Now that we discuss continuity at a point, let's quickly talk about continuity on an interval. In order for a function to be continuous on an interval, the function just needs to be continuous at every point in the same way we just discussed along the entire interval. Or another good way to think about it is if you can draw the function without picking up your pencil, then it is continuous along that interval. So now using this information, let's take a look at what causes some functions to be discontinuous. In this example, the function is not continuous because there is a hole right here with no other value for that x. So f of a is not defined for that point. In this example, there is another hole at x equals 0, but this time the function does have a value for this x. It's right here, so f of a is defined. However, for this example, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is this point, but the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is this point. So the two limits are not equal, making the overall limit as x approaches 0 not exist. Now for this example, once again f of a is defined where the hole in the function is, so we pass the first rule. This time, the limit as x approaches a from the left is here, and the limit as x approaches a from the right is that same value, so the overall limit does exist. However, for this function, the overall value for the limit does not equal the value of f of a at that point, so this violates the third rule and makes the function discontinuous. Okay, now that we went over continuity, let's discuss differentiability. But first, if you're finding this video helpful so far, please smash those like and subscribe buttons to support us making more of these videos. Alright, just like we did for continuity, let's first talk about differentiability at a point. In order for a function to be differentiable at a single point, x equals a, all that we need is for the function's derivative to exist at that point. For this function, its derivative looks like this where it starts at some negative value and steadily increases to some positive value. So for this graph, the derivative absolutely does exist for x equals a. Or in other words, the function has some slope value at x equals a. Now let's talk about what it takes for a function to be differentiable on an interval. Just like continuity, in order for the function to be differentiable on an interval, the function must be differentiable at every point within that interval. Or in other words, the function's derivative must exist for every point. To help solidify this concept, let's take a look at a couple examples that aren't differentiable. First, let's look at this function. For this example, its derivative looks like this, where for the first half of it, the function has some negative slope value. Then at this point, the slope instantaneously jumps up to some positive slope value and continues for the remainder of the interval. To the left and right of this corner point, the function is differentiable because its derivative exists. However, right at this point, we don't know what the slope value is, so the entire function is not differentiable on this interval. The same concept applies to this type of function. Again, to the left of this cusp point, there is some defined negative slope value, and to the right, there is some defined positive slope value. But right at the cusp, the derivative instantaneously jumps from negative to positive making the entire function non-differentiable. To recap, here are some rules of thumb for remembering continuity and differentiability. In order for a function to be continuous, there can't be any breaks or gaps. You must be able to draw the function without picking up your pencil. 
In order for a function to be differentiable, the function must be smooth without any sharp points or instantaneous changes in the function slope. I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you did or didn't, we'd love to hear what you thought we did well or what we could do better down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.